welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll discuss the best camera settings for the DJI Spark, which can directly impact your video quality. We'll go through the settings in the DJI Go For app menu before you start flying and how to get more cinematic and professional looking video footage. Now first, let me say that I would consider the information in this video secondary to first learning the basics of flying your Spark and understanding all its functions and features. You'll want to feel comfortable flying your Spark before you spend too much time caring about the camera settings. When you first start flying, the auto camera settings will suffice. But for those who have been flying for a while, you'll enjoy the information in this video. So let's get into it. When you first connect your Spark and you're, and you're ready to fly, you'll want to go into the top right corner of the DJI Go For app. This will bring up your menu settings and you'll want to adjust many of these factory default settings. Let me cover one or two basic settings relevant to every flight and this video. In the first menu, uh, always remember, set your return to home point before anything else. Just worth mentioning, as it's something I always do before flying. I also leave my return to home altitude at its default setting of 30 meters, about 100 feet. You'll adjust this based on your flying environment. Also, under visual navigation settings, I have enabled backward flying turned on. Um, just check those, make sure that You've got similar settings if you want to follow along with uh, the recommendations that I'm going to make in this video. In my opinion, you'll be able to get some of your best shots with the Spark when you're flying backwards. With those basics out of the way, let's go into the remote controller settings and button customization. You'll want to set your top button on the remote controller as camera forward down, and that's going to help you with your gimbal control and settings which we'll look at next. This is important because it will increase the rate at which you can flip the gimbal from looking straight ahead to a downward position as shown here. Now, you'll be able to move the gimbal quickly by pressing the top remote controller button. This will save you some time when shooting video. The next setting is your gimbal settings. We wanna slow this down so you have a more fluid and less jerky movement when shooting video. Remember, the Spark has only, two axis, has only a two axis gimbal, so the best footage is always when the gimbal's moved slowly. It's very distracting to the viewer of your video when the gimbal moves too quickly or has a jerky movement. I just don't like that at all. Uh, gimbal settings adjust the speed at which you, your gimbal rotates when you press the gimbal wheel on the front of the controller. Because the wheel can be rotated partially or fully, you can control the speed of the gimbal by not rotating the wheel fully and only giving it a partial turn. I would recommend you set the gimbal speed between 10 to 15 for the best look in your footage. Now, go into the actual camera settings, the three white lines under the record button. This is the most important part of the video. Here you want to change the camera settings from auto to manual to get the best cinematic footage. In auto, the camera decides what it thinks are the optimal settings for your photos or videos. In manual, you decide what will look best for your photos or videos. In manual, you'll be able to, to, to decide the settings for your ISO and shutter. You'll also notice an EV setting on this screen. The EV, or Exposure Compensation Value Dial, shows you how far away from the recommended settings you are before you take the photo or video with manual settings. Ideally, you want the EV to read zero, and if it's plus two, then it'll be too bright. If it's minus two, then the picture will be too dark. However, there are some situations where you might want a high or low EV. For example, if you're trying to take a picture in a darker environment with a slower shutter speed, then you'll want a higher EV setting. You can keep your eye on the EV dial as well to assist in getting the proper setting. The shutter controls how long light is let into the lens. To simplify things, a low shutter speed lets more light in and is good for taking pictures in low lighting while a high shutter speed lets more light in and is good for crisp shots of moving objects or people. To set everything up properly, you may also want to go into the icon gear on the top and turn on your histogram. Uh, this gives you your light value from zero to 100. You may want to place the histogram somewhere you can see it. In ISO settings, zero is black and 100 is white or overexposed. You want your histogram to show the graph sitting somewhere in the middle as this will give you the best footage to work with in post-production editing. You don't want your footage overexposed or underexposed because you won't be able to recover details in the footage later when you're editing. 
you will need to adjust these settings based upon your environment and the light and your lighting scenarios. Uh, also, when making all these adjustments, you want to point your spark in the direction you'll be shooting. So make sure your camera is adjusted based upon the actual lighting conditions coming into the lens. In other words, don't make all your adjustments when the spark's sitting on the park bench pointing east and you plan on shooting a sunset going down in the west. Your spark should be pointed toward the direction you'll be flying as you're making these camera settings and adjustments. So the last thing I want to do is, is select your white balance. This is also under the gear icon. You want to select the option that makes the most sense for the scenario you're shooting in. The majority of the times you'll use either sunny or cloudy. You can also dial it in under uh, the custom option as well. The reason you don't want to use auto settings for your footage is because your spark is constantly moving and the lighting conditions are constantly changing. Your camera sensors are going to keep adjusting and the color keeps shifting, which makes your footage look terrible, especially when you're trying to edit it later. Uh, I didn't understand this concept at first, but I wanted to be clear that your camera settings will not only affect your photos, but also your video footage. At first I thought camera settings were specific to my photos only, but I was wrong. So it's important to make changes here in camera settings to get the best video footage. I double check this in the DJI Go 4 manual, and I'll leave a link to that below for those who may not have seen it. One additional thing you can do is turn on your grid lines under the gear icon. You can use these grid lines to use uh, what's called a rule of thirds. The rule of thirds basically says to align your subject with the guidelines and their intersecting points, placing the, uh, placing the horizon on, on the top or the bottom line, or allowing uh, linear features in the image to flow from section to section. In other words, you don't want your subject smack dab in the middle of your shot, as it's less interesting than placing your subject in one of the intersecting thirds. Uh, it's also important to know that these settings are half the formula to great video and cinematic footage. The other half of the equation is always your post-production video editing. There are other videos out there on color correcting in post-production, but it's worth mentioning that this uh, too can have a huge impact on the look and feel of your video quality. Many folks are using Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud or Final Cut Pro to make further adjustments in their video settings. Uh, you'll hear terms like LUTs and, and changing frame rates to color correct or slow down the footage. Uh, additionally, there are file export settings that can be tweaked and tuned to upload to YouTube and other social media platforms. Those topics are a discussion for another day, but I'll try to put something together on that as well as I further develop my own editing skills. As of this video, I'm still using Adobe Premiere Elements 14 but I do plan on upgrading my editing software at some point to take advantage of some of the additional features offered in Premiere Pro Creative Cloud and Final Cut Pro. Uh, until next time, I thank everyone who's subscribed, and if you haven't sub subscribed yet, I hope you'll think about subscribing. Enjoy the evening, and as always, stay flying.